Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, it says this. Now, <laughs> this is getting crazy here. Now, war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. <laughs> okay. So John right here, what's important, he says, now. Why is that word so important? Because it's at that present moment. It's not a backstory. As we hear the backstory and all that, John is brought back to the now. So now. And as we discussed before, Satan has access to a portion of heaven where he accuses the brethren day and night. We also learn in 2 Corinthians that his domain is on the earth. Paul would describe Satan as the God of the world. In Ephesians chapter two, verse two, he's known as the prince of the power of the air and also his demons. As we see in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly places. So while tribulation occurs and all out, fight breaks out. Now we don't know what's gonna happen. And this, this, let me get your attention real quick. You ready for this? How is it gonna look? Like as I'm talking about war in heaven right now, what are you imagining? Can you just type that in the comments real quick? Like seriously, like do you think that the angels are gonna have machine guns? Like, ha 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 ha, right? Like do you think they're gonna have bows and arrows? Do you think they're gonna have swords? Like, or are they gonna have weapons that we have never even imagined before? Because we don't know, but then also in light of Colossians chapter two, verse 15, look at this. He, Jesus, disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them into open shame by triumphing over them in him. Okay. Now, once again, in your holy imagination, I feel, I think, at least speaking for myself, I gave the devil and his minions so much power, even in my imagination. Like, they're weapons. Like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. But Colossians says, having disarmed them. Like, you can't even imagine, like, okay, what are we going to fight with? You know, I, I, the, the story that comes to my mind is Gideon. Right? Gideon's about to fight the, the Midianite army. And what does God say? Go fight with a pitchfork, not pitchfork, a, a torch, a clay jar, and a horn. What are we going to do? How are we going to fight a war like that? Can you imagine these demons now? Like, we, we don't have weapons. We just have sticks, man. Like, what are we going to do? I like what Henry Morris wrote. He said this. With what weapons... And by what tactics this heavenly warfare will be waged is beyond our understanding. Angels cannot be injured or slain with earthly weapons. And such physical forces as we know about are not able to move spiritual beings. But these beings do not operate in a physical universe. So there must exist powerful physio spiritual energies of which we can yet can only have a vague imagination, energies which can propel angelic bodies at superluminary velocities through space and which can move mountains and change planetary orbits. It is with such energies and powers that this heavenly battle will be waged and the spectators in heaven, including John, will watch in awe. The Greek paints the picture that Satan is the one who starts the war, that punk. He initiates it. But what causes him to finally wage this war? Like, why not do it earlier? Why not do it right now? Some speculate that it's gonna be because of the rapture of the church that's gonna cause it. Second Thessalonians, look at this. It says this. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, first the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we'll be with the Lord forever. So some theories are that as believers are raptured, Satan will try to hinder 
their passage. Since he's the prince of the air currently right now, and he's going through, you're going through my realm? You're going up there to my enemy? Like, no, 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 this is done, man. Get your sticks, let's go. And they have this all out brawl. Now, there's a picture I wanna give you. Can you just put it on the screen for me real quick? Because the picture I wanna give you goes against pop culture. We see in pop culture how the devil is red and he has horns and he has fangs and all that. And he's actually able to go toe to toe with Jesus. Uh, like that's a picture that we see all the time. But in fact, did you know that in the Renaissance, they painted the devil red and gave him the pitchfork and the horns and the tail and all that to ridicule him and to mock him because Satan, Lucifer, is known as an angel of light. He was known for his beauty. And so we mock him in this way artistically. But once again, in our pop culture, in our world, we actually think, we actually think that Satan is in the same weight class as Jesus, able to go toe to toe. Like he has all this power. Note takers, write this down. You ready for this? He is not all powerful. He is not more powerful than Jesus. Is that a correct grammar, grammar girl thing to say? He's desperate. He's desperate. And even though, look at this. Oh, you're gonna love this note takers, right? Even though the language here speaks of war, of conflict, of battle, you know what John does not record? He doesn't record how long this battle will last. And that's significant because did you know at the shortest war in human history to be considered a war lasted only 40 minutes? And it was considered a war. Now, once again, even though Satan might say, oh, I'm tired of this, let's go, right? It could last five minutes and still be considered a war. But it is a losing battle. He is no match for King Jesus. Verse eight, but he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Okay, now, ready for this? Oh, guys, this is, it's about to get even better. You better, better buckle up. This is gonna be good. Okay. Earth is dealing with a full now, a full one-third of the demons. Those that are released from the bottomless pit, you remember Abaddon? Those that have been released from the Euphrates, you remember how those four angels were released and then we had the 200 million army, the demonic army? But then now those that are expelled from heaven from this war are now fully and completely on earth. 